Hello, jewelry maker, John Scott here. Just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. 13 years, my word, 13 years. You've not had me on enough, have you? I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic 13 days. Happy birthday, jewelry maker. From the hobby maker team. Happy birthday, jewelry maker. 13 years of crafting your own gemstone jewelry. And I know this birthday celebration is even more exciting gemstones to come. Happy birthday. Um, it's wonderful to be here and I'm very excited to be able to be doing a demonstration for the uh, birthday show, for the birthday calendar. My name's Rachel Norris and I'm a, my specialism is wire work. So when, well we're going to open the, the calendar now, when I opened the calendar myself to make the piece, it was just wonderful. I was absolutely delighted. So let's open this calendar and find out what's inside. So I'm going to move the calendar over and just open this box. There we go, let's have a little look. Box number 11, which is little, this little one down here. And add, when I actually open this, oh, I was so happy. In this beautiful little organza bag was the most, well, you can see now, the most beautiful pal. And it's the most, the iridescence on it, the shape, and it's through drilled. There it is, an absolutely gorgeous perfect little pal and that's basically immediately inspired me to make um, a swallow and I wanted to make a swallow holding a pearl. Now the swallow has all sorts of symbolism of luck and happiness, it's a symbolism of spring, of summer, of new beginnings and um, many cultures um, just they're all, everyone loves the, swallow, the swallows so they're beautiful birds and many cultures have them as symbolic creatures of as I say good luck happiness positivity um, symbolizing um, the, the spring and summer and um, sailors actually tattoo swallows <laughs> on their arms for every 5,000 nautical miles they do if they want to put a swallow on there and it's the earth is it's like 4.1 swallows round basically <laughs> um, so um, what else um, it's also symbolism of the Greek goddess um, Aphrodite um, and and it's just an all-round beautiful wonderful little bird so here it is holding its little pearl um, and we're going to learn how to make this. Now I've made this in sterling silver and the ingredients are out on uh, my Facebook pages but it's 0.8 millimetre silver with um, sterling silver wire, round wire with 0.25 to 0.3 millimetre wrapping wire and all the little beads, there's 8 O's and 11 O's um, you'll need to sort of embellish. You can embellish in all sorts of colours as well, you don't have to just go for the sim simple plain colour. And what else? Um, on, from the little pearl, I've got a single, single ball-headed head pin. Um, it's in Sony, so with some beautiful bead caps, um, which I got in the kit um, XGGP29. And that was a bit, some beautiful um, bead caps there. And um, you don't have to work in sterling silver. You can work in bare copper, which I recommend when making the, the bird, first of all, because, you know, there's some bending and lovely bending techniques in this um, that you'll need to get right first before going straight in with this, your silver. So I recommend working in the copper, copper-plated, or bare copper, which is, is even more forgiving when making these bends. So I think we can get started. So... Oh, I was I was delighted to get that um, calendar box. It was just just right up my street. I was so happy. So let's think about this. Um, we've got I'm going to put a template on the um, website and Facebook page and all sorts of places. But if you want to take a screenshot um, now, I'll put a ruler here, and we'll just have uh, at some time. You can put a screenshot on that, take a screenshot of that, and use it as a template. And there's basically just two frames. There's, um, there'll be a wing frame and a body frame, and I'll show you how to make 
both during the demonstration. So I think should we get started? Oh, tools, yes, it's the other things you need. They're so simple, they're very basic tools. There's nothing major or horrible. I mean, they're the basic wire working tools. So you need chain nose pliers, and chain nose pliers are fantastic little tools. They've got tapering ends, nice little pointed ends and flat surfaces so you can make nice um, bends in wire and you know fine tune your your working there um, there are round nose pliers for making well round things loops and things and they've got tapered um, plier jaws with small points here to make tiny little loops and larger loops down at the base and they're good for turning circles and loops and all sorts of things like that and curves um, and the other um, it's basically it's the knife of the fork and the, the knife fork and the spoon basically that's all you need when you're making um, your your wire work. Here's the flush cutter pliers, which have a nice sort of sharp flush cut, flat one side, slightly tapered the other, so that when you cut, you get completely flat cut um, on the on the on this flat side, and you can make sure that you've got really good closure for jump rings and things like that. Um, so when you cut using that, you'll get a really flat straight surface so they're perfect as well and the other things you'll need to work with is obviously a little steel block and I've got this one with a block on the back but a normal steel block would be absolutely fine and this got loads of marks on it sorry about that but try and help make sure your your steel block is as flat and, and and clean as possible <clears throat> so you don't get marks on your wire and the other things are hammers now there's two shapes of hammers here this is like the standard one which is the ball pin hammer um, here but you'll need a small faced hammer so you'll need one of your like a one ounce they call it something like one ounce or two ounce hammer so if you can go for a one ounce it's got a small face and you can get into some of these really tiny surfaces which we're going to be doing some hammering techniques um, on very small areas of the of the bird. So um, try and get a little small faced hammer if you can out of your toolbox. If not, Jewelry Maker have them on their website. So they're, they're really useful. So I think from that, you've got the tools, you've got the ingredients. So let's get going. So I'll put that to one side. Now go, I'm going to move on to the hard surface when I'm actually working. So I've got a soft surface here, which is lovely when you're sort of setting stones and things like that. But um, what we're going to do is just move to hard surface. I'm going to move this little um, away, this little um, beautiful little pad away, and then we're going to start. And I'm working with 0.8 millimetre wire. I'm right in the middle of the screen. That's perfect. And I'll put this beautiful pearl to one side. I do not want to lose that. So what we're going to do first is make the bird um, body frame. So really, for that, you'll need about 30 centimetres of 0.8 millimetre wire. Um, and we're going to make this on the blue frame on the, on the template. And I will also put photographs up on my website of the little stages, not website, the Facebook page, of the stages um, of the frame so that you know, you'll see what basic frame you'll need stage so let's make a bend right in the middle of the the bird to start making the beak I'm using chain nose pliers and I'm using my fingers to push I'm gripping near the bend I'm just actually just pushing I'm sort of, um, pushing to make the bend so we're going to use little, different techniques to making bends in this tutorial so it, this is kind of the basic one really so now I'm going to I've made a kind of soft bend and now I'm going to sharpen it up by, by sort of, um, by gripping both sides of the bend with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to squish it, so I'm going to make a little tiny little little sharp beak. And you can see it fitting over the template like so. And next thing we're going to do is flare just a couple of millimetres, maybe three millimetres on from the end of this bend, outwards to start making the little head. So a little flare outwards, gripping near where you want to make the bend and outwards. Oh, just forgive my state of my nails, by the way, because one nail completely disintegrated. I've had to like literally hold it together with, <laughs> with nail varnish. So it's everywhere, on, on especially one of them. So forgive my nails today. So I've got the little beak then there. 
And we're going to have quite a dome forehead because um, to make it as cute as possible, the, the flat of the dome at the front of the head, that makes a cute bird. But if you want to make a, like a bird of prey, you can like flatten down the head and make it like quite elongated because they, they fly quite quickly through the air. And you can make a different shape of bird. So this basic template can be adapted to make all sorts of birds. You can shorten the tail, you can add more feathers in. You can, you can, you know, these techniques can be made not, not for this, just this bird. You can make all sorts of bird designs um, following the, with these techniques. So it's the start. Now I'm going to just dome over the head. So I've got a little, little head shape there. And we don't want to close that beak down too much, remember, because I want to hang a little object from it. So um, I've got quite a wide little gap We'll still keep that gap at the end of the, the beak. Now, a little turn at the end of the body. What I might do when I get home is highlight this body template a bit more so it's easier for you to see because I think the green of the wings that I've drawn here might blend in with the body too much. Hopefully you'll be able to see it when you, can, um, when you get the image. So I've gone over the bird's back, up to the tail, we're going to make a, um, a, a bend at the end of the tail. Now, one of the, this bend is a different technique of bending than we did for the beak. We're going to do quite a pointy bend. It's ready to make the end of the feather as, as pointed as possible. So you make a soft bend first and bend outwards. And then we're going to lift it off. We know it's in the right place, but now we're going to bend it to the back of the frame. So this is the technique we're going to use to make the wing as well. So all these feathers are made in the same way. So we're going to just turn 90 degrees. So this wire is now facing at the back, to the back of the um, bat here, right to the back. And first of all, I'm just going to just press it to the flat with my fingers. So I've got it in the right place. Can you see? So it's right at the back of the of the tail rather than to the side of it. Now this technique is quite important. Bring your fingers up side by side, holding that wire in place till nearly at the tip, and then bring your, your pliers up, your chain nose pliers, and clamp front to back, front to back near that tip. There we go. And that's actually brought it into a very, that's starting to be that sharp point. So it's really, really, if you can see, if I turn it, I don't know whether you can see it, if I turn that, you can see that it's a really, really sharp point, like so. Now I'm going to grip, grip near the end of that tip, and then I'm going to pull this wire tail towards me, and I'm going to flare that outwards. You can see that's now flared outwards. Okay. And just beyond, and I'm, I want to keep that tip wire just underneath that top of the feather, but I'm going to flare this out, and that's going to be the side of the tail over like that. And before we do anything else, we're going to do some hammering. We'll do this for the wing as well. But I just want to get that tail feather hammered. So bring in a, a steel block. We're going to work to the edge of the steel block so that I do not want to hammer that bend. Because if I hammer that bend, that will disintegrate and completely um, break um, because you don't want to hammer cross sections of wire with any force. So I'm just going to hammer across the top of the tail, working on the, on the edge of the block, and you actually move the wire a little bit, there we go, and then I'm going to turn it round, turn that block around, work on this side to hammer that side of the tail. There we go. So that's the tail, one side of the tail hammered. Bring it back over the template and we're going to reshape it because it's also distorted over this blue frame. Gripping just near where you where you want to pull round, and I actually pull the wire with my fingers rather than actually. Quite a lot of the benders are actually by pull it, by actually pulling it into shape. Now the end of the tail is made in the same way as the tip of the of the of the of the tail. So I'm gripping near where I want to have this base of the tail, and I'm going to just pull it upwards um, in front of the bird, right up and to the top. And we, get, we know the bend is in the right place, so I'm going to take it off the paper and I'm just going to push it into place over the top of that bend so it's lying on top of it in the same way as we did the tip. And then do that um, process of gripping. So 
grip side to side near where you want to make the bend, clamp, clamp over it, clamp over it, and then we're now going to pull this wire round to make a, like a little curve round, following that sort of curve on the template here, because that's going to make a little cowl. So we've got that. So next thing to do, there's a little line showing where you need to cut, so you need to just cut that, and you've got the end of the tail there. Just going to curl it. Um, in fact, actually, I just might quickly do the other belly of the bird, actually. From the base of the beak, you bring it over the belly of the bird and then start to form the other side of the tail. And the other side of the tail is formed in exactly the same way as the top side. So what I'm going to do is move straight on to the frame that you need to have, which I think is... Uh, not here, so I'm going to quickly make this frame. Now, in fact, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to curl that tail, and I'll show you the, the, the curled frame. So we'll be all right. So I'm um, just going to take that away. What we need to end up with is a bad frame like that looks like that. Can you see? With two beautiful tail feathers and two curled curls over the, the front section, a, bottom, a belly, a back, and a, a little beak. So I'm just going to show you how to make the curl. So I'm going to slightly lift that away um, from the uh, front of the feather. Bring the, the round nose pliers into the very tip of the wire and start to make a turn, like so. Cut the end off, because the end is always a little bit straighter. Take that away, make another turn. Really nice um, and tight. Little curl. Uh, with the round nose and then I just twist it round a little bit further with the chain nose. So press that back down over. Oh, just in fact, actually, do you know what? We're going to hammer it. <laughs> so bring the, I've taken it away from the front of that bend. This is just, just hold it away and over the side of the block. And if you can work over the side of the table, it's even better because you've got a bit more sort of room for the bird to fit. And just um, use the small faced hammer again. And we're going to hammer, in fact, actually the back of the tail so turn it over so the, um, the beak is downwards. Hammer that um, curl. Don't hammer anything else. And then bend it back over the front of the tail again. So here we go. We basically should end up with a bird with a frame with two hammered little, two hammered little curls and beautiful pointy tail feathers. So that's the start of the swallow. So we can then we move on to making the wing feathers. And the wing feathers, again, they look quite complex, but actually they're just made in exactly the same way that we did the tail feathers. So it really isn't awful. Once you've got this bit right and you know what to do, uh, we can do the, the wings. So starting with the wings, you need about um, 60 centimetres of um, 0.8 millimetre wire. And we start in the center of the wire again, and we're going to start make, to make the eye. We follow this green frame on the template. We'll try and make it a bit more um, um, easy to see as we go anyway. So make a bend right in the center of the wire. And so start to make that corner of the eye. So again, very similar to way to make the beak. So this is that first way of making bends. Grip either side a little bend, just to sort of narrow it down. And then, as you can see, as we follow it over the eye, we need to flare it out a little bit um, to make the upper and the lower portion of the eye. So we're going to make like a little tiny little lemon shape. So, um, gripping near, very near that first bend, flare outwards, grip again, and then just a bit further down and start and pull it round to make the top part of the lemon. And then grip on the other side of the bend very close to that bend. That's why I need to chain those pies with very small tips. I might change these round to the other pair I've got. No, I'll use these. And then round like a little lemon, and they cross over. So you can see you've got a little tapered, little lemon shape. That's the eye, and the eye bead will fit in there, and that'll be an 8-0, I think. No, actually, I put an 11-0 in there. But you can put an 8-0 in, it doesn't matter.
And bigger birds, remember, you can see it fits over the eye here, you can, you can expand this template up and make quite a big bird if you want to make like a hanging object or, um, you know, something um, from a, um, you can make a bigger one. Now I grip where these, near where these um, wires cross over and pull the wire downwards or outwards, sorry, on either side. You can see I'm gripping and I'm using my fingers again, hands, to make that bend. And one wire will form the top wing and one set of wires will form the bottom wing. And they're formed in very similar ways. So we're going to go along the bottom wing first because the top wing really is just, just the same. So we're going to, because the swallows have a little sort of feather marking um, to demarcate the top of their body um, from their bottom of the body. They have a sort of slightly different pattern of feathers. I've tried to follow the demarcation of the feathers to form that first little curve. And then we make a very sharp bend right here and we're going to bend upwards to form the top of the wing. So I've made a sharp one bend to mark where I want to be, soft bend then the sharper bend to really sort of tell the wire where to go. And then I'm going to form the top. So I'm using the template as a guide, gripping near to where I want to sort of move that wire and then moving the wire slowly into place. And the top feather here, to form, um, it's on the top of the, the wing, the top feather also forms the loop for the hanging necklace. So we're going to do slightly different techniques. Remember we clamped that um, tip of the wing feather or the tail feather quite tightly. We're going to make this into a loop. So what I'm going to do is actually bring forward bring this forward at the top of this tail and make a sort of subtle bend a little bit, maybe five or six millimetres long from that top bend. I'm going to bring this wire, the, the round nose pliers in, and I'm going to loop around to the back. So it's actually lying on top. It's not a sort of sideways loop, it's a sort of um, anterior posterior loop. So I've got a tiny loop, if you can see, at the top of that feather. At, at the wing feather. Grip, chain nose pliers just at the base of the loop to kind of hold it together. Then I'm just going to pull that outwards. And what we need to do before I do anything else, I want to hammer that top of that feather. So I form that top of the feather, but we need to hammer. So each time we form a side of the feather, we need to hammer to the side of it because uh, it can get quite complicated and you just need to be able to get, do it as you go. So everything you don't want to hammer, hang off the side of the block, bringing the small face hammer, and you just hammer along the top of the wing feather. Don't hammer anything else at this stage. Make sure you hammer the back of the bird so any, any hammer marks do not show. They're always at the back. So you've got the top wing with a nice flat surface. The reason why you hammer is you, you strengthen that with that um, feather you work hard on it and you also create a nice shiny reflective surface. So next thing to do is pull the wire around and make, just again following the template, make that top feather. And the base of the feather basically is the same. As remember we did the base of the tail, we looped it back. So we're doing all these sort of frontwards backwards loops rather than sideways, sorry, not sideways bends. So normally when you make, uh, make bends, you, you basically have them all flat on the, on the page, but we're actually um, going front to back with these bends. So I want to make this bend right at the, uh, where the, it touches against the top of the wing. So I'm gonna grip near where I want to bend it and make a subtle bend because I need to then lift it off the page, keeping the pliers in place and then I'm going to pull the wire again front to back, so pulling it to the back of the bird and then bending it over so that it lies underneath that, that uh, wing edge you just made, feather edge you just made. I'm turning it round so you can turn the pieces you work so that you can actually make it easier um, just to, to manipulate. Make sure again it's flat, flat, front to back and then again do that technique where you're gripping near where you want to clamp and clamp front to back. If it twists, don't worry, twist it back and then clamp again until it's properly clamped in place. So that's that. Next thing to do, form the top edge of that feather. And I'm not too worried about hammering the top edges. I tend to hammer the base edges of these feathers so that really glitter um, 
uh, as the piece turns. So I'm now going to just form the top edge of that next feather. Again, make that subtle bend. Before I do anything, I'm gonna hammer it. So I'm gonna slightly pull it out of place. Hammer that top edge, if you want to, you don't have to. This is a very small, subtle hammer for this. That's it, I'm not doing too much. I'm gonna make that top wing edge again in that same, same way. So grip where you need to make the, the bend or fold it over with your fingers. Grip top to back, front to back in that same way, holding near where you want to make that clamp and make sure that it stays front to back. And with this one, we're not making a loop because you can see on this side on the top feather here, we made a loop. But this one, we don't want to make a loop. We want to make it as flat as and tight as possible, just like we did the, wing, the uh, tail feather tips. So again, uh, we've made that tight bend and now grip at the tight bend and pull the, the, the feather downwards just to start to form the bottom edge of the feather. Then grip just beyond that, that tight bend. And you want that tight bend to be like, I don't know, about three or four millimetres, maybe four millimetres before you start to flare the, the wing outwards. So it keeps that tip of the wire, a real appearance of being sharp. And then bring it round um, to form the base of the feather like that. So I'm okay with the shape and I just want to hammer it. So we're gonna hammer the base of the wing feather really on the edge of the block, just like we did before and hammer the base of that feather. As you can see, I'm working to the edge of the block, everything off the side and a hammer along. And basically, that's the technique you need to use. So again, come to the, the, the um, point at which it's touching the next, the, the top of the wing, and we can make the next bend upwards in the same way. So we're gonna make those feathers all in the same way. So if I find a wing frame, which I've got, let's go for this one. You can see you end up with you do the same. Basically, you, do, you work along all these little feathers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven feathers there um, along the base. You've got, you've got a nice long bit of wire for the curl here, and you curl that up. Can you see how I've done that? So you've got all these feathers made in exactly the same way, and then a curl at the base, and I've hammered the bases of these wings as I've made them, and the base of the curl. And I've gone up with the other wire and made another wing in exactly the same way at the top. So you've got this, this wing shape and that will fit over the body nicely. So you've got the body you've made and you've made the wing frame and that will sit over. And you can sit at any angle. You can make the wings be at any angle. You make those wings out to the side like an owl or you, know, you can do all sorts of things with this technique of making the wing feathers. So you can see how this will fit together. So we're gonna start adding beads in um, and assembling the bird. So we'll do the wing first, because that's what we've got to do. Because that actually has most of the beads in. The, the body doesn't really have any beads until you get to the tail. So we're gonna take some 0.25 millimeter wire. If you want to work with 0.4, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that two wires will work, uh, will wrap through the 0. Yeah, two 0.4 wires will go through your beads, um, and the seed beads will do that, but some of these small little beads won't. Um, you can choose all sorts of colours, you can use the same tone as the wire you're using, or you can go for all these sort of vibrant tones. So what I'm going to do is take this template away, I'm going to work on the soft mat, because I've got all my beads on that. <laughs> and I've gone for some colourful ones, um, which should be quite nice. So, we've got a lovely little body, uh, bird body to the side, we'll work on this, this wing now. So first of all, we're just going to use quite a long length, about like, well, you can work with like, a, like one and a half meters of wire or a meter of wire. Um, if you want to work with shorter lengths, just work with one meter up one wing and, and the rest up the other, of the other wing. If you run out of wire, you can add it in, it doesn't matter. So we're starting with the eye, and I'm just gonna put the midsection of this 0.25 millimeter wire at the back of the eye, um, at the, near the, sort of tip, the front tip of it and I'm just gonna wrap along this little eye 
for, until halfway along the top of the eye socket. So we're using, we're going to use, by the, the point at the end of this t tutorial, you'll have used wire shaping, bending techniques, hammering techniques. We're going to add in beads um, and attach frames together. So there's an awful, there's a lot of technique, but when you break it down, they're fantastic techniques you use in every part of your wire work. And you can make all sorts of designs. So I've wrapped the top of the middle of the eye frame here. And with the other part of the wire, the other end of the wire, I'm going to wrap along the lower part of the eye frame. Now, my wraps here are dreadful. They're kind of spaced apart. So we can do things about that. What we're going to do, you can either use your fingernails to just push those wires together or gentle side-to-side -side pushes of your pliers just to push them together so they lie neatly together. Now, at the top of the bottom of the, the eye frame now, we're going to add an eye bead. So I'm going to choose a beautiful little purple um, ato. Sorry, 11 now actually, but you can put an, if the, your eye frame is wide enough, put an, put an 8 in. And I'm going to go for an 11 now, but that, those beads, a single little 11 now can still produce so much colour. So I've just put the 025 millimeter wire through one side of the bead and then put the other end through the other side of the bead. And this is, I call it a crisscross bead attachment. So it's, you're actually crossing the wires through the bead. Um, to put it into place and it forms strength in numbers. So 0.25 millimeter wire through both sides of the bead will give the strength of double that th wire thickness. So now you're pulling very, very gently and sometimes these wires it'll kick, kink a little bit and I'm pulling very gently, putting my finger over the bead as it pulls down into the eye socket to actually pull it into place. So that's great. So what we're going to do now you can see that eye, that little eye bead is sitting nicely in the eye, eye socket. And what we're going to do next is add all sorts of beads in along the wings um, and basically the same techniques all along the wings. So once we've made the start, we'll be all right. So what we're going to do then, um, I need to wrap all along the side of the, the eye. So I'm going to do that now until I reach the base of each wing. So I'll do the lower wing because the top wing is made in exactly the same way. It's just the lower wing has an extra little step of doing things, so we'll do that one. The top wing, you just do the same, you just wrap beads into it. So you can see me gently wrapping and pulling it round gaps in the frame to bring it into place. And we're going to head round the corner of the eye. Again, every so often, just push the wire into place. Because I'm working well away from this, normally I'm really close to where I'm working, I won't be seeing where I'm not quite wrapping properly. So you'll take time, take time to place every wire in, the, in, this, in, the, in its proper place, make sure the wires don't overlap, they don't cross over each other, and if they do, just undo it a little bit and then go back in there and do it again. And it's, uh, you just catch it as it goes, and it just makes for a lovely, neat look. So again, I'm leaving little gaps because I'm going quite quickly. And it takes you, I probably will take you a morning to make the bird, um, maybe less if you're quick. And that's not too bad, is it? It's a and it's a nice thing to do. It's a beautiful thing to make. So I've got to the end of the, this little wing bend here. And I've reached where I can attach to the cow. So I'm going to wrap around this lower cow. And every so often, you can use the template just to make sure you're wrapping in the, same in the right place. So place it over the template. So, oh, yes, that fits into, into place, because that wing will actually eventually sit over the other wing. Um, so, yeah, OK, that's the right place to wrap the bird. So I can just take that diagram away. Holding everything in place, I'm going to wrap around that sort of kink at the bend of the, the wing and that curl. And you can wrap around it like about five or six times, something like that, making sure the wraps lie side by side, like so. OK. And you can see they lie, lie in a beautiful, flat, sort of reflective side by side formation. To make that even more so, just gently, gently clamp front to back with chain nose pliers. And that really, really secures that, that wrap. And also, really make sure that's a lovely, uniform, reflective surface that will really reflect the light beautifully. So we're now at the start of the base of the wing. So we're going to work along that. 
So let's add some, start adding some beads in. The first bead doesn't need to attach to the base and the wing. So we're just going to wrap at the front of the wing. And then I'm going to just place it down on the mat. Okay, and let's go for one of these beautiful little purple beads, which I love, and they're lovely. I've gone for seed beads, or you can use the beautiful spinel that we had in the show, because um, that, that's what I used for the for this one, wing to give it lots of lots of um, glitter. And I passed the wire, the bead into the base of the wing, and started to wrap around this very lowest feather here. This is where the wire, the wire kinks. So just make sure this, this little 0.25 millimeter wire can sometimes kink, kink. So just keep your fingers in position and just make sure it stays smooth. And also actually, it's really good to be relaxed when you're working with wire because the minute you have any tension or anger or anything like that, the wire will always break. So it's just put yourself in a really good Zen frame of mind if you can. <laughs> So, um, so I've wrapped around that base of the wing and I'm going to bring the wire around because I feel that this bead could do with another um, uh, bead pass through it, a wire pass through it, because it will add to strength, especially if you're wearing this as a pendant, might be, you know, catchy on clothing, thing like that. You need to make sure your beads aren't going to come off because the wire fractures. So, again, look, can you see where I couldn't find a wire tail? I've used pliers to grab a wire tail and put it through the bead. And very often, because my fingers can't get at something, you can use pliers to, to bring a wire tail through. So I pass it through the bead again to add a strength of attachment. I'm putting it slowly first, and then before it starts to kink, before it does, I'm just putting my finger into that loop here, just to make sure there's no kink. Holding my finger over the bead, Pull, 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 and that's into place. And you can see I pass it now twice through the bead. And that adds a real strength of attachment. So that's now the equivalent of a 0.5 millimeter wire through the bead, so that's brilliant. Now bring the wire up to the top of the wing, and we're gonna wrap along the top of the wing just on its own for a few wraps until we sort of reach a point where we might be able to, sec to secure to a wing base. And don't worry, if you need the frames or anything like that, I will put pictures of the frames up really close up so you can see exactly you know, how, what they look like. It's really important then. You can then visualise it as you're making it and have maybe even print them out. They'll be up on my pages. Rachel Norris, jewellery designer, or JM guest designer, uh, Rachel Norris. So here we go. We've, got some, we've reached a point where we're going to bind to another wing base. And just pull this wing base up, either using pliers... Up, so you can see we're wiggling it a little bit, so it's going to touch that top of that wing. That's brilliant. So you can see that gap has been reduced. So I'm going to put another little seed bead onto the wire. This is where I get... There we go. And then just from the top of the wing, pass the wire... Now, this is another thing you can do. Because you made this, this bend really tight, it might be too tight at first to fit to the top of that that wing bend. So what you can do is slightly bend upwards to loosen it a little bit. And then when you bring this round, this will cinch, clicks nicely into the top of this bend. And again, pass the wire through the bead again. So we're gonna do two passes of the bead. Now the wire gets, you can see where, as you're working with wire, it often gets the all foot at the end. So cut the end off and you have a nice straight wire again to work through, to pass through the bead. And it'll go through the beads much more quickly and you'll think, oh, why didn't I do that before? And that's why I start off working with quite a long length of wire to allow me to do this. I'm passing it through the bead again, catching it in place, catching that loop in place nice and beautifully so it doesn't kink. And then that's through the bead again. Pass it round the wing base, put it tight, up to the top of the wing, put it tight, and then clamp that wing base back into place, either with pliers or just with your fingers to sort of really sort of tighten it up again. And then wrap along the top of the wing, ready to add in the next speed. I'll just show you what the wing should look like. So here you go. Here's the, the finished wings. And you can see I have wrapped all the way along each wing at the top of the wing, at binding to these little bends in the wings, adding in beads as I go. And at the top of the wing, I added a larger one, so an 8 
bead, which is fantastic, an 8 bead at the top, and um, bound around there. And then once you get to the top, you need to cut and tuck in one. I'll just show you that quick technique of doing that, even though it's not like a fish, but let's imagine I've got to the top of the wing. So I've wrapped around maybe where I want to be, finishing off. It's not gonna let me do that. Okay, I'm pretending it's here. It's just a little technique used to finish off wire. And it's really important you know how to do that. So wrap along, maybe this is pretending what I've added in the last bead, and it's not gonna let me do it. <laughs> okay. And say, and then what you need to do then is bring in your flush cutter pliers really close to the frame where you want to actually end the wire and cut it in maybe a millimetre or two millimetre or two from the end and, and cut it flat into the, the, the wire and then smooth the wire in the wire end around the frame like that in the direction of the cut end like that like so, and then when you run, you run your fingers over, number one, you've got the cut end away. You try and get it on the, in the edge, in the edge of a frame. So you're not on the outer edge of the frame with a cut wire. So any cut wire stays on the inside of the frame. It's not gonna catch. You smoothed it down and that's gonna stay where it is. So that's what I did when I got to the top of that wing. So I smoothed, cut and smoothed that wire end down around the frame like so, just to really keep it in place. And with the other wire end, I worked along the top of this little eye and did exactly the same, wrapping along to the bases of these wings and then added that top bead in. So you've got a wing bead with, wing frame with beads and you've got a body frame and now we're gonna um, add them together. So we're gonna make this beautiful swallow. So next, take some more, um, 0.25 millimetre wire. Again, you can work with 0.4 if you want to. And we're going to use half, some of this I'll talk through, some of this will do. Half the wire, um, sort of halfway along it, um, bend it. And I'm going to use quite a long bit. Gosh, I've got about a sort of, um, I mean, you, can work, you can work with about a metre, I reckon. Um, you can always add in wire if you want to. Um, but I tend to work with one long wire just for those reasons. You've got fewer cut ends, fewer sort of bothers of adding wire in. So as, as you get more experience, you'll just work with longer pieces of wire because you think, oh, I can't be, can't be bothered to cut it and, and add in new. So with this bird, we want quite, if you actually look at this, we're going to get to this stage. So adding these together, we're going to get to this stage. So you can see um, that I've got quite a big dome of head before I... I um, um, sort of start adding the wing in. Um, and with this wing, as you notice on that wing frame, there is a curl actually at the end of this wing. You can either cut, tuck it in at the top of this wing or with this wing frame, I touch it to the back of the frame. It really doesn't matter. So I'll show you what I mean. There is a little curl. I tucked it in while I was working, touched out of the way while I was working with a bead right here, and then I, you can either pull it to the front of the wing to add detail, or to the back of the wing. So you will have that curl, so that's quite a useful thing. So you can see how I put that back into place. So when you're working on the wing, just put that curl um, out of the way, and then put it into where you want to um, have it after you've added the beads in. So we're gonna add, wrap along the top of the head. Um, so we start quite near the beak, and I'm gonna, to widen this, this body out, just make it really easy and quick to add the, the wire in. So you can see I'm holding the frame near to where I'm wrapping, so it stops it distorting, because sometimes when you're first wrapping, you can really sort of distort the frames. And if um, that you're worried about that, just hold quite close to where you're wrapping and it stops it all distorting. And again, you can see that I'm just pushing the wire together with pliers. This is hence how my fingernails are so dreadful, because I use my fingernails, it's awful. But it's an awful habit, but that's what I do. And my fingernails are <laughs> just in the state they are because of it. So if you can use the gentle plier pushes, it'll save your nails. Um, so along the top of the, her head until I reach a point which I can add in the wings. Now, I was going to say that um, you can use the um, photograph of the finished bird, little swallow, just to help you 
gauge where these wires are going to be placed or wrapped along to. And I'll uh, put a photograph up, obviously. That'll be on uh, all the, the, the um, my pages and also the Jewelry Maker Share Your Makes page, which is a lovely group page uh, for everyone to, to come to. So hopefully that will go onto there. So there'll be places that you can find me for that. So we've got along to the top of the bird and we're going to start to add the wings together. So you can see I've got one wire tail near the beak and one wire tail to work along the bird, the top of the, the back of the bird. So um, let's see, what do we do? Yeah, there we go. So bring this into place. Now again, use the diagram just to help you to, uh, to add this together. You see, so you can put it over the diagram again. Think, oh yes, this is the exact angle I need to be. So you can work over the, the diagram if you like. I can't here on the, because it'll actually show you, it'll be too confusing um, for you on the camera. But you can see how, you can say, oh yes, that's where I need to place it. So you'll need um, that sort of placement of the wings. So really high arch, beautiful wings to, as it's diving through the air. Uh, it's caught its little pound in its beak. So place it over and you can just make sure the little corner of the eye is near the beak and the back of the eye is near the back of the head. So the back wing is just gonna emerge from the, the back of the head. So bind around here. And I'm gonna cut this one a little bit because I need to work quickly on, on and, uh, but you'll be pulling wire through so it will take you a bit longer to work at first until the wire starts to shorten. So thread it through and you're going to just start, this will start to bring the bird together. You can see how, some of this I'm going to talk through, but you can see how it works. Cut, wrap round both the base of the wing and the back of the head. And the first, first, this bit is like the most fiddly bit because nothing holds together and it all slips around a little bit. But once you've got this first set of attachments in place, it'd be so much easier to work with and it starts to really hold itself together. So wrap around both the back of the head frame and the base of the wing a few times. And then, sorry about this. You can actually thread it along the back of the wing if you want to as well, like that on the back of the body to get to where you want to. And that is another way of getting to it. Um, so you can do that either way. So you can see how I've wrapped around there a few times. Now use the other end of the wire just to thread through the base of the eye, you see? So turning the, I'm going to again cut this wire, um, turning the bird, so I'm working from another direction, I'm going to thread the wire through the very inner corner of the eye once and then twice, there, and then we're going to work at the back, pass it along the back of the beak pull it, the arm to place a little bit so it's right centred in the middle of the beak and then now start to bind around the other side of the eye. There we go. Twice. And that's the kind of the most difficult part of the binding in, so making sure everything's in the right place. So again, place it over the diagram every so often, just to make sure your wing angles. You can see how it's, it's holding itself together now already, just with those two binding points. It's in place. And you can slightly shift these wings around, make sure this top wing is sitting over the, the bottom wing. Sorry, yeah, top wing is sitting over the back wing. Place, place it into position, and now you can start to work along the bird. Top and bottom edges to bind everything into place. So I'll just start you off showing how to do this and you'll be able to do the rest yourself. So what I'm going to do, I tend to place the wire along the tail and then pass it along the back of the wing and it glides into place near to where you want to wrap. Do that again, you do that sort of, it'll take you a little bit of time. And then imagine I've got to work along the, the front of the bird and I'm going to then bind around the wing curl. I haven't done that, but obviously you can see how you would do it. Wrap along to here and start to bind along this wing curl to attach it to the frame and do that a couple of times. And then you work along the bottom of the bird and the top of the bird in the same way. So that's that next little bit. I'll show you where you need to get to to work on the tail. 
So here we've got a little silver bird. I haven't got my silver beads out, so I'll work with um, some of these coloured beads um, to uh, do that. I haven't got my silver beads, no, don't worry. So here, we, I've worked along the, t the, the base of the bird, attaching binding to the cow and to the wings, just a couple of points along and, uh, until I've reached the base of the tail. And along the top of the bird, just, I might have just tangled myself around a bit, bear, bear, bear with me, and then catching in, not only where you first bound, but to the, the other edge of the wing here, where it crosses the body, and along the back until I've reached the top part of the tail. And here we're just going to bind in some beads. And again, it's very similar. It's a crisscross bead attachment. So what we're going to do is work on the tail, and then we're going to add the pearl in with that very last little um, bead cap. Um, so we start off with an 8 OC bead, I think, at the base of the tail. And you can add in as many um, beads as you like. So... What did I do? Yeah. So I did basically a little 8 o, sorry, 11 o, across the base of each tail um, feather. That's it. Okay. Okay. Like that. And wrapped around the base of the, of the tail feather. Same with the other side. So I did another 11 o and wrapped to, from the side, outer edge of the tail to that inner kink. And make sure you pass twice through that bead. Now, I have only got time to do one pass through, OK? So try and get it twice through. And then what you do is add in an 8 bead with a crisscross bead attachment to really cinch that tail together. And then you can add in more beads up the tail you, as you like. So I'll bring that fork of the tail together. Try and make sure the fork at the base is sort of lying really close together to make that sharp base of the tail. So I'm adding that, that last bead in with a crisscross bead attachment, like so. Put it tight together, like so. And then wrap along the um, inner surface of the tail a little bit. And you can add another bead in with a crisscross bead attachment if you want to. So I'm just going to slightly, there we go, like so. You can see how I'm doing that. So we're just then going to add in that pearl um, to the base of the beak. So what I'm going to do is do a dreadful thing and slightly cut these wires um, because we'd really need to sort of add in that pearl because that's the, the, the beautiful object that was in the, in the, um, in the uh, box itself. So if we've got this little... If you focus in on here, while well, I'm just putting the components together, that's what we need to achieve. So I've got a beautiful bead cap from this lovely pattern. There's all sorts of designs in this, this pack of bead caps. So I've gone for a little floral design. So place the beautiful pearl, fat bottomed first. You can use a, a flat edge um, head pin if you, want, if you don't want the ball end, but I wanted the ball end to show. Um, so you can have a sort of cat one if you want to. Pass it through the beautiful pearl, put a bead cap on top. Then I put another silver bead on top of that, or you can just um, sort it out like so, just with a little bead on top. Thread it all through. Use your chain nose pliers to make a, um, a slight bend outwards. Bring your round nose pliers in to start to make a loop. And this is a basic wrap loop technique. Bring the chain nose, the round nose pliers back in again, just to grip, and then turn a bit more. So you've got it facing out. Now it's a bit loose, so what I'm going to do is turn it and turn it and turn it until it's quite tight against the beads. Then pass it through, so there's no play. Pass it through the beak before you close this loop. So in it goes, and the bead always comes round. Do you know what? I'm going to um, just take the bead off, actually. No, it'll have to be. Come on. And I literally, we're into the last seconds now. Pass it into the beak. Make sure that bead is trapped below. Grip. Grip near the, near the loop. Pull round with your fingers. Pull round with your fingers. And there we go. You made a little turn. 
bring in your flash cutter pliers, cut near that turn. You've done, I've done a couple of turns round. Um, save that bit of silver because it can be melted down. Clamp chain nose pliers tips around that and then you've got a beautiful swallow with it's a beautiful, beautiful box 11 pal um, dangling from its little beak. So that's the end of the demo. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you will love making uh, the swallow. You can make all sorts of birds. And um, I'll see you later on uh, Jewelry Maker. <laughs>